Good to see you again, Caesar. Appreciate you being with me just to talk a little bit about your wonderful self. <laughs> but first of all, for people who don't know you, I don't know who they are, but <laughs> for those who just being introduced to you for the first time, tell us a little bit about who you are, where you're from, and what you're doing. Uh, I'm Caesar Galindo. I'm originally from Houston, Texas, born and raised. Um, and I live in New York. I've been there for 27 plus years. I'm a fashion designer. Mm -hmm. And you're not just a fashion designer. You're a phenomenal fashion designer. I, I've seen your, your work for years, and I just appreciate just your creativity and the amount of time that you spend to really create every single thing that you do and how it always flatters a woman. Well, I, I'm, I'm blessed to say that I live off my passion, mm -hmm. and I love what I do, and um, I've been doing it all my life. I've self-taught, and uh, I've learned my craft through my mother and my family. And, uh, I get to do it. I get to. I get to live by it. Whether it's not about the money, it's just about being able to practice what I love to do every day. Mm -hmm. Now, tell me a little bit about how you got started. How old were you when you decided, "Hey, this is the route that I'm going to go"? Okay, so in Houston, Texas, we have Westheimer, and we used to have the the lower Westheimer, which was like the curve. And I used to sell to some uh, stores, consignment and sell uh, when I was in junior high. And uh, I learned to create something out of nothing and make money off of it, and it kind of became addictive. And I became an, an addict, I guess, addict, addicted to myself and the creation. <laughs> and, um, and slowly, you know, everything developed through time. And um, my path and journey guided me to New York. And I, it's been a great experience through the course of my life. So, It's so difficult, though, because people at a young age, a lot of people have always said, oh, I want to be a fashion designer. I want to go to New York. I want to do this, that, and the other. And they never actually do it. How is it that you are different from so many hundreds of thousands of people who have been able to get to that point and accomplish so much? Well, I've been really blessed to be aware of certain things that came into my life that I was ready for. Uh, when Grace Jones came to New York, uh, to Houston, actually, and I was in high school, I gifted her like three outfits, and then security came and asked me to come backstage. I spent the rest of the night with Grace Jones, and Grace Jones was one of the first people to tell me that I didn't belong here, that I belonged in New York. So those are kind of influential things that happened in my life that I'm really they are special gifts that have been given to me. Um, I got asked to do a Texas designer show at the Danceteria in New York, where uh, Madonna was a co check girl. And I left, I dropped out of high school to go do the show. And that was kind of like a pivotal point in my career, like at the beginning stages. And I was like, okay, well, this is what I want to do. This is my dream come true. And I, I dropped out of my senior year and I went to New York City. And I came back, of course, because I was so young. And um, I just kept doing what I love to do. And that's just been the, the, uh, the path of my life, you know? Now, let me ask you this. People probably ask you this all the time. What inspires you when you design? Because I know it's different for every single person. It could be something outside that they see, the elements. It could be just seeing something, a dog walking down the street and say, oh my gosh, I have a vision. What inspires you every time? I'm a textile driven person. So I, 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 I and I'm kind of backwards in my process of development. So I, I like to search for the fabrics first and the prints and I develop stories that way, and then subconsciously it develops into this this story that becomes another story. And it's um, but I find textiles to be my candy; they're like my chocolate, you know. And I'm addicted to them, so I, I'm always excited to go into the marketplace to find my new. I, and I, my sources are wholesale sources are developing way ahead of seasons, and um, so that's where I, I get my inspiration. And the textiles drive the design, the drape. I'm a draper, uh, and until you get the fabrics in your hands, you really can't develop a design. And a lot of times I design, I actually sketch after I make the sample. So it's, I'm, I, because otherwise it's, you can live a fantasy with, a pencil can, is an endless fantasy. You can sit there and create and we can communicate fantasies about anything we want to create. But I find it really frustrating if you get caught in a place where you don't have the resources or the fabrics that you're imagining. So I'd rather find the fabric and then imagine it and then design it, so. That's wonderful. And also, of course, you sew as well. I, I can sew, cut, and drape, and make everything myself. So Because yeah. I know there are a lo lot of young would-be designers out there who can't do that, which kind of boggles my mind because I always thought that you had to have the ability to actually put this together on your own with no one around because that I, I would think that would help. I think if I can advise anybody out there that wants to, to, to follow a dream or a passion, it's always to submerge yourself and know everything about your craft, whether it be mechanics, sewing, draping, um, sculpture, um, acting, whatever it is that you're uh, being, a, even just a, a doctor. I mean, practice and submerge yourself in your craft. Today's technology, you have everything at your fingertips. So do your homework 
and practice with your hands and your mind and your spirit because that's how you develop and evolve your own identity as far as what you're doing. And how do you get over the frustrations? Because there are times when, of course, you have these amazing ideas and they come to fruition. You're like, oh my gosh. But then there are times you just hit that brick wall and you cannot break it down. Right. I go to the beach and I have a drink. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you have to have downtime. You know, you always, you, always have, you always have to pull back from everything you're doing. I believe that's an important thing for anyone to do and, and breathe and, and take a deep breath, step back and come back and reapproach your your craft your craft or your project or whatever you're developing because all of a sudden you get yourself in an outside the box experience and a lot of times we get stuck in our own bubbles and I think that's sometimes the biggest obstacle course of anybody's life. Mm -hmm. you know? And also be ready for rejection as well. You have to have a, I'm not a tough, well, a tough skin per se, but you have to be prepared for everything. Right. Well, you know what? It, it, it's like taking your clothes off and going on stage. It, you're exposing yourself and you have to be prepared. You, you have to, it, I, I always tell people this. I'm only I'm creating I'm creating beautiful pieces for people to wear. That's what I love to do. That uh, that's my ultimate goal is to create something that's going to excite somebody and, and inspire their day. But I'm not doing brain surgery. I'm not having heart surgery. I'm not giving. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not trying to cure cancer. I'm just there to make it someone's day a little better for that for that moment. So I don't take it. I take what I I love what I do, but I don't take it so seriously. And I think some people when you can, when you take yourself too seriously it's you're you're stumbling yourself mm -hmm. so but you are creating something you're creating art you're telling a story you are sharing a part of who you are which can be very intimidating for a lot of people because you are putting a piece of your soul out there for not only judgment but also possibility of of admiration right um and and just appreciation uh, my favorite thing is to be the voyeur and and not and seeing someone in my clothes and i'm not knowing who i am and i don't ever expose it because i'm just in, entertained by someone's feelings or expression or you know you could body language when they're wearing something that i'm doing they don't know who i am mm -hmm. and I, that, that's a that's like a selfish pleasure no oh, i'll bet i'll bet yeah. and you've worked with a lot of different people over the years too i've been i've had a great path in life to work with a lot of incredible talented people that inspired me singers performers you know it's like the music music drives me in what i do and i just i've had the great opportunity in my life to, to work with some incredible people around the world mm -hmm. so. and i know you're going to not mention it so i'll go ahead and mention one music musician in particular who happens to be on television right now um you're talking about gwen stefani you had a chance to work yeah, with her. I, I worked with gwen on her collection for three seasons um i worked with shaka khan i did all her stage stuff i do all the joan jett stuff for her stage and it's like i love working with her uh, I've worked with Madonna. I worked for Dolce Gabbana for like nine years. At Missy Elliott, Mary J. Blige. I've worked with a lot of people. Justin Timberlake. People. It, I. It, it's. It's a job for me, but it's been a. Look, when I'm getting the, those. That when I get that kind of work, it's always never planned. It's just always by being at that place at the right time. Reputation, and 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 de delivering. You always have to deliver. If you say you're going to do something, you have to deliver. And I've delivered to those those wonderful talents in my life. And those are talents that inspired me and that and i'm just on the on the on that i'm just giving you a, 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 a the general level i've worked mm -hmm. with other artists that are different places like in theater and uh, collaborations i mean what's life if you can't collaborate exactly one thing i do love though i mean you can we can name drop all day long but one thing i've noticed about you just watching you over the years is that you still remain humble through all of this i mean you're one of the nicest people uh -huh. out there and it's not always like that uh -huh. in the industry in any industry but you remain that way. How do you remain grounded and still be able to do all that you do? I have a lot of friends. I have a big family. They'll slap me across the head. <laughs> so they keep you in check. Is you know, that it? You know, it's like, you know, I, I, as I've gotten older, I've learned to simplify life and not be so caught up with things that seem so frivolous now. Uh, but I, I've always been pretty grounded. I'm the youngest of 11 kids, so I've seen a lot of things in my life that it kept me level-headed and and a little smarter on how not to do if I'm gonna be bad do it right you know so where so, are you in that list of the 11? I'm the last one. Oh, <laughs> MG so, so you I, had 10 I, uh, I, 10 pairs of eyes yeah, always watching yeah. you outside of mom as well yeah too. yeah I've had I, I've had many many parents and they all changed my diaper and it was like you know it's like it's a lesson of life so you keep yourself stable you know mm -hmm. it's life too short that's true and plus they know way too much about you they could use as well, well I know I know too much about them <laughs>
<laughs> this is true. Yeah, this is true. Yeah, there's two perspectives. <laughs> yeah, so. That's true. That is true. Now, one thing I also want to talk about is something that's very, very close to your heart. Because one thing I always talk about on this show is about giving back. Because I, I've always thought that's so important, especially for those who receive so much and so many blessings. You have to do that. And you do it in spades. Can you tell me more about what you've been doing? Oh, well, I believe that I've been given my time uh, to network and, and pull people together for great causes. I've always been able to, if you have the time and, and the connections, why not be a part of it? So I, uh, I was co-chair for World AIDS Day here in Houston. And it's amazing what you can do in a luncheon to gather the people that are your clients and friends and movers and shakers. And we raised an incredible amount of money for World AIDS Day here in Houston. And it, benefited the community. I've done, I, I work with Texas Southern University. We do For the Sake of Art, which is an incredible, great experience in, uh, in the urban uh, experience of, New York, of, of, of Houston that a lot of people don't know about. Mm -hmm. And it cultivates creativity and art, artists and, and it gives people an opportunity to express themselves. And I've been able to judge that competition since its inception and I, I'm very proud of that. Uh, I do things in New York and uh, I give. It's, so it's so, like it, like I said, if you have the time and 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 able to at least share, you get it back tenfold, mm -hmm. and I believe that's an important part of life for me. It is. And I know you created a collection when it came to raising money for AIDS as well. To yeah. tell me about that. So I did. Uh, I did a whole collection called Rojo Galindo, and it was all, all everything went all the proceeds of the, everything was red, of course, and we showed during Houston Fashion Week and. Uh, it was it actually right at the beginning stages of the uh, World AIDS Day, and it was a part of that. And um, everything was, um, all the proceeds went to World AIDS Day on the purchase of an original gown. And I, I did about 20 original dresses just for that cause. So, you know, it's, it's sharing your expression and letting that, like, at least affect beyond someone just buying a dress. It just, it's just much more for the cause. So it's, 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 I'm proud of those things, and it's, it's, um, I, I'm always interested in doing that, so I think it's important. People need to give more of their time and self, you know. I agree, and I know World AIDS Day is very close to your heart, especially when it comes to just you growing up around a lot of people that you loved dearly that you lost as yeah, well. Yeah, well, I'm 51 years old, and I've, I, I experienced it in my late teens, a, a, a severe amount of death around me, but my mother and father were confused about and didn't understand. I, I didn't understand. I think the world didn't understand, but it was the loss of so many spirits that were uh, a part of my life and uh, opened my eyes to how precious life is. So, yes, it, uh, we're living in a different world now, and um, but it's still affecting the world globally. And I think it's important for us for never, never forget to remember life experiences like that because they're like everything can come back and be a cycle and and carelessness. So I think it's important to always have that reminder and uh, the highlighter to say, "Wow, okay, well." We're moving forward, but we have to keep remembering where we came from. So. Right, and not forget, because I know a lot of times when it comes to raising money for organizations that have been around for a while, people think, oh, well, they already have enough money. They've found some some wonderful medications that just make life a little longer, extend life for those right. who are impacted by it. So let's move on to something else, but this still needs to be discussed. Yeah, everything you have, we need to be reminded constantly, I think, about everything in life. And then I think it's, you have people that are, are uh, that are activists for those kind of uh, memories, you know, and, or like, or, or, or bring that back. I think it's important as a society for us to have that reflection, you mm -hmm. know, because a lot of people forget. We're, the world needs to slow down. I think people are going too fast and with technology. I, it, there's leaps and bounds as far as communication go, but there's also disconnection. What would you tell young people out there in order for them to step up to the plate to do some of this? Because I know there's some, some young people out there who do, but for those listening, if they wanted to get involved in any organization, what should they do? I think volunteering in any aspect, uh, even if it's for volunteering for your community, a uh, community center, uh, go to a hospital, slow down and pay attention to, to what's going on around you. I think sometimes people forget about that, but we're so, we're so cocooned within our own bubble. You know, so it's like this... There's a world going on out there, and it's not that easy, mm -hmm. you know. And it's it's not there's there's people suffering in in ways that you just take for granted, yeah. you know. Even food. That's true. So it's like you know, look at talk to your neighbor. You know, people don't communicate. Mm -hmm. People think they're communicating, but they're not. You know. So I think that's important. It's a, it's important practice of one's spirit. So. 
And before we go, just a couple more questions. You've got a new line coming out. Of course, you have your spring and your fall line. Tell us a little bit about that. Oh, uh, well, the spring is now in bloom. It's all, it's all <laughs> in, the, we, we hope so. It's a little bit, uh, uh, that it, it activates even more so with the weather. But yeah, what you're looking at behind me is spring. Um, and it's, I'm being carried by Sloan Hall in San Antonio and in Houston. And I'm actually featuring today at my trunk show, uh, my fall collection coming up for next season. Mm -hmm. So, and we're actually talking about New York Fashion Week for next, for September. So, you know, in the design world fashion, it's always constantly, we're always having to be way ahead of ourselves and, um, and planning. Right, so. that's good. And any final words when it comes to giving back once again? I think it's just important to think what's important to you and to, to, be, and to make an effort. You know, I think people get off the couch, you know, get off the couch and do something for somebody, mm -hmm. just one person and not be yourself. You know, I think, I think that, that, that becomes like an atomic reaction that you re you'll realize maybe after you do that, you'll want to do it more. It becomes addictive. It's like going to the gym, mm -hmm. like eating right. <laughs> Which uh, sometimes uh, we don't uh, always do. Yeah, no, no, <laughs> it's a lot. It's, it's, a, a, we, it's, we, it's, you know, we forget sometimes, you know, what's, what really makes us feel good. Thank you so much. Uh, I really appreciate it. Uh, You're fantastic as always. Uh, uh, and keep up the great work. Um, all the best for, of course, your spring and your fall line. And thank you so much for all that you do for those who continue to have to deal with AIDS and all the things that you do to give back to the entire United States and the world. Uh, you do a great job at it. Oh, thank you so much. Thanks for, thanks for the interview. Mm -hmm.